Dear Winnie, it's me, Pasha, who has written this letter for you. I wanted to return your invitation, as it was so beautiful, with a letter of my own, even though I already told you, yes, I want to come to your birthday party when you spoke to me in my head. I'm sorry I haven't written to you sooner. It took me a long time to find enough berries to make ink with. I have kept up with practising my letters. I can't believe I still remember so much. You are a really good teacher. I'm safe, deep in the forests. I spend most of my time staring at this one tree trunk that looks kind of like a butt, so that if Strahd ever uses me to spy, he will just see a butt. It's strange. When I was alone in the cage, I never really missed having a family, because I had never known one to miss. But now, I really, really know what it's like. So, yes... I would really, really, really like to join you for your party. Yours, Pasha. Hey Dungeoneers, thanks so much for joining us for another episode of the Strahdcast. If you like what we do here, remember to follow us on YouTube or subscribe via your favorite podcast app to get notified every time we release new episodes. Thanks again, and take your listen with advantage. Hey there, hi there, ho there, friends. It's your handler here, reminding you to tune in to Goon Files Season 2 as we return February 19th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. You asked for it, and we're delivering. One thing's for sure, the group is going to be in for a chilling good time as we dive into Delta Green's Jack Frost, written by Shane Ivey and published by Arc Dream Publishing. Are they going to make it out alive? Or will a few more of our agents succumb to the horrors of the universe? Be sure to tune in and catch us live on Twitch Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, February 19th through April 22nd. And prepare to roll some sanity checks. When last we left our heroes, Marina's soul, trapped in a massive wicker effigy, lashed out in anger and agony, trapping Irina and Dimitri in grim cages and alighting them like ghostly torches. The rest of our heroes fought desperately to survive and save Marina if they could. After Kaz lassoed the construct, knocking it to the ground, Winnie hacked her way into the central cage which held Marina's soul, casting sanctuary upon her. Invoking Zone of Truth to prove her intentions, Winnie was able to speak with Marina and lay her to rest, ending the battle and setting her soul free. Though the danger has passed for now, what awaits our heroes along the road deeper into the swamps? Find out now on the Strahdcast. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Shuffle off this mortal coil and transport yourselves to the far, foggy realm of Barovia. So we come back, and Drogar turns to Winnie, and, and grabs her by the shoulders, and looks at her, and just goes, You scared the devil out of me. I thought I'd lost you. I couldn't see you in the flames. I just turn my hand over and put the locket in your hand. And then fall forward. And, 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 I, and, I, and I catch you. Uh, and I think upon looking at the locket, I think Drogar like tears up a little bit because he's wrong again. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> when he uh, he's going to burn a fourth level cure wounds. I feel great. I have four hit points. I feel <laughs> amazing. You still have Tally who yes? Yes. All right, grab it tight. This will be over before you know it. 20 points of healing back. <gasps> I'm so tired. And I think he just kind of like puts the hair kind of like behind her ear and like feels her head and feels that it's like still seared from the light. It's like hot. <laughs> Ow. Right. Olaf, balsam weed. Do you know what it looks like? I don't know if they have it here. I, I, I would hope that they do. Um, king's uh, foil. Ah, uh, oh, king's foil. Aye, it's a weed. <laughs> is, do we, it, do, is it nearby? Like, would I know? Give me a nature check. 13 nature. 13? Mm-hmm. You've never heard balsam weed before, but you have an eye inkling that he's after 
some sort of um, medicinal herb. What comes to mind for you immediately is pearl petal. It's pu- mm. it's purple. It has a white center. It's thin, thin stemmed. It used to be bountiful in these lands. Now the only place that you could find it is deep in the swamps of Berez. That is where we are, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, how quaint. Uh, yeah, how, yeah. how appropriate that you it said, might be here. Sorry, purple petal? Is pearl pearl petal. Pearl petal. Pearl petal. My healing can mend her wounds, but the burns, the deeper. Uh, there's a plant I've, he- I've heard about, uh, pearl petal. I'll be right back. I, I actually, we might be in luck. I, it should be around here. Great. I'll be right back. Yes. Great, y'all. Great. Uh, Olaf, give me a survival check. As you head, tra- as you head off to try and find some uh, pearl petal. Fourteen. Great. We'll come back to it. So you set off in the immediate. What are we doing? I think uh, in the flash of light that happened where Winnie had that, that whole ass conversation, Kaz was just like, Enraged, rushing up the body of this wicker man with the intention of going to the cage to try to rip it open. Because Kaz was enraged, but I, can't, like, I feel like she just keeps discovering new layers to her rage. And yeah. she wasn't mad at something. She was mad for oh, something. I love that. I yes. love that. Yes. Yeah. Her intention, had it gotten to my turn, was to rip open the cage and say, Hey, your dad's kind of a dick. You want to punch him with me? <laughs> so uh, That might have worked, too. Yeah. To enlist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, Come so, grab this other spirit and set him in an inferno. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so uh, her and so I think she she follows through with some of that. She is going to rush and uh, rush forward, and I think as she's approaching um, the cage is right when Winnie kind of like <laughs> pops into existence again, and she sort of like peripherally clocks that and, and tries to like yank the thing open. She sees that it's empty, and then is taken aback and notices that everything's calm, and sees Winnie right next to her, and is just like, uh, immediately rage gone. And I think, yeah, then as all these conversations are happening, she's just like, she doesn't really know what to do with herself. She's kind of just like, she still feels angry, but she's not mm-hmm. raging. I she's know. Just, she's, like, it's like she's full of like righteous anger. I get that. It's tough. It's tough when you're facing an enemy that rage doesn't feel right for. Right? Yeah. Like, this is not an enemy that you want to <laughs> beat and destroy. This sure. is, you yeah. know what I So, yeah, I get that. It's like. Yeah, it's like anger blue balls almost. It's yes. hard when the al- <laughs> yeah, it's sure. hard. It's hard when the alignment doesn't match up. You know, it's like yeah. you're not fighting chaotic evil right now. You're fighting something that is innocent. I don't know though. You know, I think I think you're both complicating it too much for Kaz though. Never I mind. Think, I think at the end of the day, something made her angry. Yeah, sure. Fair, fair enough, enough. Fair enough. And that's all that matters. Fair yeah. enough. Drogar, after you have this 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 moment with Winnie, uh, Irina also comes over. Are you okay? Are you all right? Oh, my God, I thought I, the flames just swallowed you up, and I thought, what happened? I think she's okay. I hope she's okay. Are you okay? I don't know what to think about all this, little sister. I don't know what any of it means. Man, me neither. Well, there's certainly a lot to discuss. Is there any safe place we can go? Well, I this think, place? I think perhaps inside this church, before this thing ripped the roof off, we are quite secluded. And something tells me that Bablazaga is not going to come looking for us. I yeah. think she wants us to find her. Yeah. I'm thinking perhaps we, uh, well, use the amenities here to us. And, and little one, I would not suggest that you go marching off to fight the witch. No, no, no. I don't really want to. I want to get this balsam on you and... So your wounds and uh, 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 Irina, come here. Let me look at that forehead real quick. Hold I it. am quite honored. No, 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 I won't hear it. Come here. Yeah, come yeah. here. <laughs> uh-huh. So you start doting, and uh, and then behind you, you begin to hear like, <laughs> and you turn around, <laughs> and Dimitri <laughs> is like tearing the p- pieces of wood yeah. off of like the the limbs of, uh, and remaining construct of this wicker and he like gathers up an armful walks back into the sort of church rectory proper throws it down on the ground and just whoosh, one of his the tips of one of his <laughs> fingers on light, and he just whoosh, and starts a, a bonfire <laughs> um, and turns around and says well, at least I Let's all rest ourselves, yes? Right. Tough guy, you next. Come here, please. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, 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 the hell you not? Come here. I, uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Irina, you're going to get... Boy, they were... Jesus. Not feeling good. Nope. Yeah. That nope. was tight. Didn't yeah. look good. That was tight. Irina, you're going to get 12 points of healing. Okay. And Dimitri... 
you are going to get 10 points of healing back. It's almost a shame that it was just the NPCs that ended up in the cages. Ugh. It's actually worse <sighs> that the fucking NPCs were the ones that ended up in the cages. Isn't that just the way? Yeah, I got a, oh. really, I got a really high con score and really high strength. I would have just fucking kicked my way out. Yeah, absolutely. But like soft, sweet magic boy. Mm-hmm. And of course the fucking fire is an actual fire. Yeah, of course not. That of would be too easy. Of course it's right. <laughs> Winnie is starting to walk back into the church with Tally Ho and then turns around and runs back to you, Drogar, mm. and says, wait, can I see that for a second? And holds her hand out for the locket of that course. she just put in your hand. And then starts walking back while you're actively, like, healing Everyone. Dimitri and everybody and Irina. But he grabs your collar and goes, as soon as I get that balsam weed, you come right back to me. Do you okay. understand? All right. I will. And she starts walking back in and kind of up on a pew in the church Mm. and opens the locket to see if there's anything inside of it. You begin to kind of work at it and you see there's a latch on the side, but it it, it looks like this locket has been lying in swamp water for however many years. So it's kind of rusted shut. Give me a uh, athletics. I can't roll anymore. Okay. <laughs> I simply can't. It's too painful. I'm just kidding. I will do it. Athletics, you said. Mm. <laughs> and there's the good roll of the night. Yeah, right? <laughs> About fucking time. <laughs> Two failed persuasion rolls and suddenly the athletics one kicks it. <laughs> Fifteen. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you uh, you manage to sort of like dig your, your little nails in uh, and, and spring the uh, rusty latch on the locket. Uh, and it opens wide. Inside is inscribed, uh, just on the inside sort of wall of the locket. It says, um, stay bright. Uh, With love. Jesus. Mom. Well. As she reads that, she hears Clarabelle's voice in her head saying, you're the best with the most. Yeah. Trigar will uh, finish healing Irina and Dimitri, and then he'll turn to Dimitri and go, uh, uh, why don't the two of you go warmer by the fireside while I wait for uh, Olaf? Uh, a fine thought. Perhaps you could uh, make sure the perimeter is secure. I'll make sure of it. That brings us to uh, 14 survival? Yes. So you head out a ways. Olaf, well, as, you, as you make your way alone, away from this new crew that you found yourself amid, what's going through your head? Yeah, I think I finally feel good to feel useful Mm -hmm. uh the fight didn't really go my way i haven't really been able to do much scouting in the swamp because we've been in such like a shitty area so it's like i finally am like yes i have a purpose let me do this like i can i i have my way to help the team now that says a lot i just i just had this moment where i pictured you like after a game be like so uh how's it how's it feel to have a win and you'd be like well you know i just i didn't feel used for for a while and now we're we're really sticking to it and it's that yeah. one didn't quite go my way yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 i'm just happy to yeah. feel yeah. useful right now <laughs> like yeah. an interview after winning the world yes. series yeah 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 uh-huh. you know, I, I know i sat out half the game for a torn hamstring but i know <sighs> that i'm also great on camera <laughs> <laughs> I really love plants. <laughs> and I know this say I've lived here for a really long time. <laughs> so as you make your way through this area, uh, Olaf, you I don't know that you've ever been into Berez before. I uh, know. The berserkers yeah. skirt the they they like stick to the outskirts. Mm-hmm. It's not a place that it's just not their domain anymore. So like I know yeah, I, imagine, of Berez, I imagine most Berovians but... would avoid it mm-hmm. given its history. But it's kind of amazing, Olaf. It's like you're walking through, and, and, and as you move away from the combat, both in distance and in time, and you search the ground for Pearl Petal, there's so many things here that you thought were stories. You can hear frogs chirping in the distance, which you haven't heard before. You've been told of, but not heard before. And there's flora, the, the plants that you that like in textbooks, you know, there are there are, there are ancient uh, berserker uh, uh, like tablets and texts that speak of medicinal herbs that that could be found free flowing in Zenobia that maybe even were thought extinct. But here in this 
relatively untouched part of the valley, you come across some of these things you thought were fables. And as you search through the underbrush, you come upon, finally, your feet start to sink deeper and deeper into the muck as you as you carry forward. But you know, you, you come around this sort of copse of trees. And uh, standing there is a beautiful uh, uh, bush that only comes maybe three feet off the ground. But all around it, like like ornaments on a Christmas tree, are these rich lavender petals that you recognize to be pearl petal. So I think he sees it and he almost like stops for a second. He goes, I only hoped it to be true. And then he like snaps himself out of it. And then he realizes that this is like a time sensitive thing and like real quick, yeah. like harvests what he can and then makes his way back. But it doesn't it's not lost on you, Olaf, that like. And it's not just this. It was the the boar. The berserkers haven't had boar meat in well, who knows how right, many decades. Like in, in my lifetime. In yeah. your lifetime. Right, yeah. You thought they were extinct too. But it's something about these folks. They're bringing Zenobia back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that all, like, as he's making his way, looking for the pearl, uh, pearl leaf, he's, and he's seeing all these things that he only heard about. Like, it's all coming to him. Like, it's like... But he's trying to – he realizes he's got, like, a mission. So he's mm-hmm. pushing it to the back of his head for now. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, it hasn't – it's it's hit him, but it's – But it just hasn't worked its way all the way through yeah, yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. I got so you. I got he's, you. like, keeping the mission in front of his mind. And, and just in the back of his head, he's kind of, like, amazed at, like, the company he's in and, and what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. But he's – trying to keep the warrior mind focused mm-hmm. great and you do so yeah you, you you cut a swatch and head back to your companions so i'll like jog up to to drogar and go i found it that's it all off you beautiful bastard <laughs> and he, like, <laughs> slaps him on the back of the neck and like kind of does like the head-to-head thing yeah and he goes, Woody, come here Woody! <laughs> and goes run again pop up off of my pew that i'm sitting on and i'll at loop the locket around my neck as i run over mm-hmm. and he goes to uh you know he, he goes to like your your head and you have these like these phantom burn marks, these kind of shades like across your body. And he uh, he pulls out like a tin, I guess like a tin mortar pestle that he might have in his adventure pack. I, I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. You have an herb. Uh, sure. Herb- or cleric's kit has like a mortar and pestle for incense and shit. Yeah. So, yeah something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so he takes the flower and he and he and he kind of just goes <laughs> and like ignites it nice. so that it starts to cinder. And then he dries it out and then he throws it in there. And he's like, <laughs> he goes, sit down. <laughs> You're lucky I had this. You never know when you need to make some guacamole. <laughs> I don't know why I make it in such vast quantities. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and then, and then in, in a bit of savage fashion, he goes and spits into it to like give it moisture. And That's he's great. like, That's it, great. he's like really mixing it. And then he goes, Now, radiant burns don't go away. With no Simba. That's I'm so that glad you said so it, because that was exactly what I was thinking. I knew we were all thinking so it. Uh, Simba. Simba. She's alive. Rafiki. She is alive. alive. Um, banana, squash, banana. Um, so, yeah, so he, he'll be like, raisin burns, they don't go away lightly. Uh, no, the bosom weed, where I come from, uh, they, uh, apparently they call it pearl petal here, but this will take away that sting, that ache. And as you turn around, you've got one on your back. Hold on. Hold still. Yes, I know. I know. But in the morning, you'll be right as rain. It'll feel just fine. Even though we are clerics of the light, we are not uh, invulnerable to radiant energy. Yeah. Remember the abbot? I remember up until a certain point. Then it all gets a little fuzzy. The radiant energy. What do you think makes, like... Somebody gets stuck in the thing that killed them. Is that a thing that happens on purpose? Or is that a thing that happens on accident? That's a very good question, Winnie. It depends, honestly. Some spirits are so tortured and so twisted and wrought with pain, they become specters and 
sometimes ghouls they they, they they deform themselves they they can't pass on they can't seek the second life sometimes it is as simple as a curse someone wishing another one ill dark magics necromancy i don't even know if that was what this was well, i don't think it was everybody's so trapped i think it was the former winnie i think sometimes a spirit are so innocent and so tortured by the things that envelop it in a world where it knows not what is going on. Sometimes until it finds the answers that it seeks, it cannot pass on. I hope she got where she was going to. I lay this on your conscience. The flames are gone. The girl is gone. Yet the locket remains. I don't think she would have trusted you with the locket if she was not confident as to where she was going. Okay. She is gone. This whole time, Strahd spoke to me when I was in his castle, made it seem like whoever it was that he knew, whoever it was that he held in such esteem, it was also me. And if he thought the same for this marina, I didn't know what to think. I, I, I didn't know what to believe. I, I, I thought it impossible, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I was linked somehow to this other woman uh, through the divine though be it through the divine that strides dark powers of the natural comings and goings of the universe i didn't know but 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 we, we saw her yes yeah. we saw her soul yeah yes As she, she was, was there and i am here yeah and vaguely similar in look yeah but i we are still ourselves yes it's, there's something going on in this valley but if we're not linked if it if she was her own person, if Tatiana was her own person, if I am my own person, it, is all of this happening because I look like a woman he can't let go? Is that my crime? It's not a crime. It might be that stupid. Let us make one thing sure. You have committed no crime. You are the victim of a sociopath. The law of this land, it seems... A worst crime one can perpetrate is to be young and beautiful. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. But if you were in a different place at a different time, then I wouldn't know you. You were born under a certain set of circumstances that laid out a really clear path in front of you. But who wasn't? For most people, that path kind of sucks. But every one of us, wherever we're from, whatever our circumstances are, we owe it to ourselves to be better than what we were given. Oh, it makes me furious. The injustice of it all, it makes me want to rend the earth. So do it. You didn't choose that. But you can do something about it. What is it to become a world that is peopled by such brutes? It's all... And why should the weight of all of it come to be borne on my shoulders, on your shoulders? It's just not fair! No, it's not. But it happened. So we can either do something about it, or not. If I don't do something about it, then I die here same as everyone else. I don't want that. And if I know you, Arena, you will not stand the sort of treatment for women like yourself. But what can I do? What can you do? Oh, nonsense! You can throw a javelin, can't you? You carried your brother all the way from Barovia, didn't you? To Velaki? You made sure that he survived. We all know you're the brains of the operation. Oh, sweet as Marky does try his best. <laughs> <laughs> He's a halfway decent bartender. Halfway. If you are going to be part of this group, there will be no sad soaking. You are capable. You are strong-minded and strong-willed. You've already done it. Yes. You already survived his house. You already survived him. Your job now is to conjure a plan. It is time to take down this sociopath. Not feed into his ruin. Not feed into his wrath. Not to make him happy in his land of misbegotten rules and laws. It is time to topple this patriarchy. You're a fighter. There is a reason there is a saying, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Enough to drive the devil out of his own house, do you think? You're damn right. I'm sorry, I, 
There's just all so much sometimes. There's you just got to, set on fire. There's nothing it's to okay. Just for. It's a lot. <laughs> and besides, Dimitri. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> when I'm playing Winnie, it takes me five seconds longer to catch up when things are sexy. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> you have to like check out of like huh? no kid mode yeah. oh. <laughs> and uh dimitri is over by the campfire and you know he's he has a long stick that he took from the wicker structure and he's like moving the kindling around and getting the fire going and well, he's been very quiet in his mysterious now. sexy way yeah, he's been very quiet up until now <laughs> tell me more about Dimitri brooding. Tall, the dark, fire. is brooding. Yeah, he's brooding away. He's, with, he's with, his, with his collection of long sticks. He broods. He broods with the best. <laughs> it is true what you say, Irina. This world is full of monsters. Of those who hurt for no reason other than they cannot keep their hands to themselves. It is full of pain, loss, and struggle. But this world also has you. This world can only ever be as bad as having you. And that's a world worth fighting for. Would you like us to leave the room? No! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> play, play that goddamn drop! Play the fucking drop! Uh, uh, God damn it. God damn it. Jordan leans in and goes, um, we can... We can move into the... Uh, well, so, uh, maybe we should just settle down for the night then, huh? <laughs> it's been a long day for all of us. <laughs> all the subtleties going directly over Kaz's head. I spent a lot of time on the Moon Sea on a merchant ship. The Moon Sea? Yeah. It's the sea that shared a border with... The moon. <laughs> Wait, I have that one too. There it is. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. God, we've been damn through it. a lot. I'm so yeah, it's, so, it's been a long night. fucking night. So it's sorry. Night. Uh, I spent a lot of time on a merchant ship in the Moon Sea, and oh, where's that? In accordance to the Moon Sea, Indiana. <laughs> Moon Sea, Indiana. Moon Sea, Indiana. Moon Sea, Indiana. <laughs> I'm trying to have I'm a lore sorry. drop here. Okay, I'm really done. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> well, I, honestly, I'm not really sure. Maybe we could ask Dimitri to pull up a map next time we're in uh, in his tower. But it's all I know is that the desert I grew up in, the shores of the desert, lead into the Moon Sea. And I know that the city of Melvant is also on the Moon Sea. <laughs> sort of, you know, the three are all kind of connected. And then there's a river that eventually took me down to where I met all of you, but... I don't know. I, if you showed me a map, I could point it out to you, but uh, that's about the best I could do. It was farther north than I've ever traversed. But maybe that's true. I Honestly, I'm not sure. It's just where I'm from. But the point is, when I was out on the moon sea, there would be storms that came through. And there was nothing you could do about them. You could see them coming. Prepare yourself. But if they were coming towards you, that's it. All you could do was get ready. And those storms would kick up crazy waves. Waves big enough to tip our ship over and roll it around in the sea. I grew up respecting and fearing the sun and the desert, but that was nothing compared to the sea. The water could just chew you up and spit you out like nothing. But the only thing that you could do when a huge wave was coming right at your boat was steer directly into it, stare it in the face, and tell it to go fuck itself. So, then take that for what it is. Yeah, she, like, takes a moment to compose herself. You see maybe the instinct rise in her to deflect or or, or say something self-deprecating or, you know, whatever else it is. But she kind of stills herself for a moment and says, All right, then full sail ahead, eh? I'm I'm not particularly fond of water, but... (laughs) Yes, full sail ahead. Is that what they say, Cass? Yep. Right. If Strahd wants to come with his storms and thunder, we can't control what he does, but we can tell him that he's a fucking asshole and steer directly into him. That reminds me. Arena, Dimitri, come here. I have some balsam ointment for you. Come here. Right. Fuck. Oh, come on. <laughs> Get you, those things. Maybe it's fine. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Drogar has used his breath weapon to harden the mud that has been wet. 
So he's just torched whatever's sure. around this kind of maybe this shattered statue of the morning lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's laid, you know, down. He set up his camp there and has started a little fire. And he's he's smoking his pipe and and in thought, deep in thought. Hey everyone, yeah, a contemplative evening. You all have. Yeah, I don't, just this this. It's just never straightforward, and it's not it's not simple in Barovia. This thing with Marina was a lot to take in, so a contemplative mood settles across the party as we kind of settle in for the night. I love that like dried mud idea. I think Kaz hears you doing that, and that noise is enough to just sort of like pierce the the concentration. And she just looks over and sees you doing that. And I think the dried caked mud reminds her of the desert. Mm. So I think she very briefly pauses, stops her meditation. Just like scooches over a few, like, you know, scooches herself over <laughs> and then like kneels down and with each knee just goes wham, wham, and just like digs them in a little bit. So it's almost like a little knee shaped cushion that just goes back mm. to her meditation. And I think the first breath she takes, even though they are ordinarily big, deep, hot breaths, just feels like that much longer. <sighs> it's home. Yeah. That's so great. Digging into the sand like a spa. <laughs> what did you see Trogar do like the little like with the mud just on your cheeks? Just <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> swats your hand away. <laughs> I kid, I kid, I kid. Great. Winnie will curl up in one of the pews of okay. the church. And she's kind of curled up small and is still has her eyes closed and is just kind of quietly watching everybody do their nighttime routine. Waiting to fall asleep, but not really trying to fall asleep. Just watching. Uh, I think at a certain point, Irina comes over to you as you sort of like try to get comfortable in one of these pews. And being a formerly religious person yourself, I'm sure you know that they are not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but if you really want to fall asleep, yeah. you can do. Can I think do so. At a certain point, uh, Irina comes over to you and says, I found a few things that might just make you a mite more comfortable. And she takes like a bounded book to use as a pillow and what looks like a tattered old uh like robes you know like priestly vestments which she kind of like pulls over you like a blanket without even saying anything i just change positions so that my head is on her lap and just go right back to snuggling you were very brave little sister and you did a very brave thing and i think you can go to bed tonight knowing that someone is much better off for having come to know you. I know I am. Her little shoulders just go up a little bit and she closes her eyes really tight and holds on to Irina's leg and she's like kind of strokes your hair as you and you maybe just drift off to sleep. Yeah, I head just in let her out lap as she finally just a big exhale mm-hmm. and gets still. Yeah. Drogar uh as Irina is maybe brushing her hair I don't know, maybe brushing yeah, just her hair lightly her as she goes yeah, to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you just hear the <laughs> of dragon legs behind her, and mm-hmm. Irina feels the purple cloak oh. wrap around her uh-huh. as yeah. he turns back around. And thank you, Droga. Try to get some rest yourself, will you? Yes. Olaf. Yeah, I think Olaf. He try to find the highest point in the building he could, and like preferably by a window. If cool. Possible. Ah, great. Why don't we say there's like a uh, a steeple to on the top of the church, and so you head up there, maybe even cl- scaling the facade of the actual building at the end of this exciting day. Mm-hmm. But you get up there, yeah. There's a huge, the most of this sort of like crow's nest is taken up by a huge bell. Um, but yeah, it's co- cool and quiet and elevated. You can see. Uh, around the church in all directions, at least as far as the fog allows mm. from this vantage, which makes you feel ma- more at ease, I'm sure. But yeah, it's it's quite up here. Yeah, and I, I think he'll be happy for the the view, the quiet, and he'll just sit with his thoughts and and do some carvings of some just like little like he like when he's in the woods, he'll pick up like a little if he sees like a little like knotted branch that he yeah yeah a downed something. branch or yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll like so he's just sitting there just thinking what's carving. he carving uh right now i think it's probably like a a, a panther yeah <laughs> just yeah. Idle, idle thoughts you know? yeah of course yeah. of course 
Of course. Oh, of course. So he just starts whittling and doesn't really even know what it is yet. But then after, like, if this were a movie, it's like after the whittling montage, you look at it, it's just a panther. It's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's funny. I guess that's what was in my head. Oh. Mm-hmm. Great. Great. Awesome. And so, unless there's anything else, yeah, we just find ourselves. May I like? Usually, you know, there's like practicality. You set a watch. You want to be, but like, I think everybody has just really been through it. And so, yep. despite best intentions, everyone just kind of drifts off. I mean, this might be player instinct over character instincts, but I, I, I feel safe here. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's something about it. It's like the danger has passed for at this moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you won a hard won victory and and got yourself some reprieve, I think, yeah. for sure. And so a night passes peacefully. Maybe the most, ironically, the most peaceful night you've had in quite some time, Long at least in the last couple of days <laughs> since you came down from the yeah, mountain. Wait, what are the last couple? Well, okay, so we've had yeah, it's I. I mean, oh, you had I, some nights at the berserker camp, yeah. but you, there was still a lot of wheels turning at that <clears throat> yeah, time. Yeah, I, I always need to remind myself just how recently. We saw Strahd and it lost not long. It I wasn't it, two or three time. days now at this days. point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Days, mere days. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, like we've had we've had some calm times in the Berserker camp. I, th- I think you, I think you even said at one point like there was one night in the Berserker camp that mm-hmm. we were like really chill. Mm-hmm. But yeah, still, still catching up. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and so the night passes uneventfully. No wolves tonight. In the next morning, as you awake. A new figure has joined you before the altar and before the grand stone statue that climbs the the far wall of this church in which you all find peace. The ghost of Laszlo Ulrich, you awaken to find him kneeling before the altar, his ethereal form sort of swaying in the wind. Um, and he does not notice or acknowledge any of you as you wake up, but uh, he is there. And uh, otherwise, the coming to the morning is is your prerogative. The time is yours. What would you like to do? I think uh, I think Drogar is the first up. I think Drogar has been up for a bit, and I think he's still smoking his pipe. Mm-hmm. I think he saw Laszlo, you know, make his way float over to the Morning Lord and like begin to have reverence there. Um. Even though we took a, a long rest, and I don't want to handicap myself, but I don't think Drogar slept too much. I think it was more of a meditative. Sure, yeah, eight that, hours you, for yeah, him. you can. All mechanical stuff can come back, but yeah, flavor-wise, that's totally on board. I think that's on point. Yeah, I definitely think he was uh, deep in contemplation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Olaf will be up pretty early, and I think he'll just like pass Drogar and just Master Drogar, and he'll just uh, go like check on the cart, like just walk around the perimeter just always just trying to find a way to be helpful yeah, uh-huh, any, anything uh-huh. to stay busy yeah you do so yeah um yeah olaf as you approach the cart to check it why don't you give me a, 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 a an animal handling check as you approach the cart and and desi be, beside oh no eight <laughs> <laughs> fuck I was just the next thought in my head was Desi is actually the one who is maybe warm to you fastest. <laughs> I think that's still so yeah. With an eight, like she like she startles awake. Um, you know her her fi- and, and in fact maybe you even take it as a moment like impressed with the awareness of this horse, mm-hmm. uh, 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 with perceptions and senses beyond that of a, of a usual beast of burden. Um, but she raises her heads and. You know, like shakes it back and forth. So you see her mane wave back and forth, and the ears go everywhere. And she, easy girl. Yeah, she swings her huge head around to level her eyes at you. Then she clops her way over and just pushes the the long front of her face like up against your forehead. Yeah, and he'll take a moment and he'll like just like pet her jaw and mm-hmm. just be like. <sighs> You've been through it, huh, girl? <laughs> Better times are ahead. And then uh, pull out a little, little small carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Chomps at it gratefully. And then I'll check the harness, check the Yeah, car, yeah, it's yeah. all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make sure everything isn't working mm-hmm. right. Like, Great. Probably like triple check everything. Yeah, yeah, Just, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, why don't you give me uh, an investigation? Or uh, either investigation or... Uh, Survival. Stick with survival. <laughs> Ooh, 
Ooh, that's a 23. <gasps> yeah, you you get in there and you even manage to maybe like work out some of the like grime that has accumulated on like the axle and the and the hitching of the wagon uh, after so much time. You give it a good scrub over uh, and uh, both Desi and the cart are looking good as new by the time you finish. Yeah, clear out uh, Desi's horseshoes. Yeah, stuff, get the like, muck out of her out. shoes. And, yeah, that's great. And wash down the axle and all. And yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. When he's sleeping in. Good for Winnie. She's earned it. Or Irina's probably up, but she's still curled up under Drogar's cloak. I think Irina's out too. Uh, yeah, she, I think she fe- she's going to have a crick in her neck in the morning, but she fell asleep with like the cloak wrapped around her, still sitting with your head on her on her lap. She can Winnie can start to hear the sounds of people moving around, mm-hmm. but it's that in between space that's you can just ignore so that. Cozy. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. I think Kaz had just like fallen over where she was mm-hmm. you know like she had been she meditated until she fell asleep and just like from a kneeling position just kind of <laughs> tipped over um but i think she wakes up kind of naturally rolls back into her little knee indentations kind of just gives him a little smile and then just takes into her surroundings and i think notices laszlo mm-hmm. and he's at the altar you said yeah he's up at the sort of like front of uh, the up against the the back wall of the church which has that big statue of the morning lord rising uh, up above it and yeah it's just kind of kneeling you see his hands clasped and steepled together uh as he just like throws his head back and looking up towards a and em- the the empty sky where the the wicker man tore away the roof of the church yeah i think she'll go she'll go and she'll kneel next to him and she's not going to try to like emulate the sort of postures and poses of his mm-hmm. worship but she'll just kneel next to him i don't know i guess i just want to get a sense of his demeanor Mm -hmm. yeah you do so um it's hard to read being a ghastly figure and knowing so little of him but you do you come to settle beside him and he doesn't move he doesn't draw his eyes away from the you know staring into whatever it is he's seeing sort of beyond his immediate surroundings um but you do hear his voice kind of start to stir is she gone i don't know but i do know that she's less angry than she was before it was a terrible terrible thing you did to her it's not my place to judge you i don't worship your gods if they're real it's up to them if she's at peace now what do you think happens to me is this the punishment for my sins to labor away here until the world breaks and all falls away. Yes. If it's any comfort, just know that everything dies. Even gods. I lived a whole life, but this one event seems to make or break all of it. Do you think me awful? Do you think me a monster? I don't think anyone is truly beyond redemption, but I do think the choices we make when they are the hardest are the ones that show us most who we really are. And I think you can either take this time until the world breaks or until your God dies to feel sorry for yourself, or you can try to learn something. I have more to do, you say. What choice did I have? What could I have done? What would any of you? And at this point, Winnie, you kind of maybe are jostled a bit as you feel a, a little bit of movement from Irina. What would you have done? No, I was forced. My hand was... I had no other option. I... It should never have been your choice. It should have been hers. I'm not going to say I don't feel any sympathy for you, because I do. Any leader has to make decisions under pressure, and they could always easily turn out to be the wrong one. Indeed, it was the precious, uh, the precious of leadership, the precious of rule. I, None I, of that matters anymore. You're not doing this for them. I loved my daughter. I, 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 I would never purposely do anything to, to harm her if, if there was any other way, if there was anything I could have done. Whatever. You did it. It happened. All you have is right now. I have to agree with Kaz. 
the camera pans over and Irina and she like kind of gently maybe tucks a hand under your head, Winnie, to replace her her thighs with a rolled up uh, cloak or, you know, something to 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 buoy your head. And as she comes to stand, she looks with icy vigilance at the ghost of Laszlo Ulrich. You're so concerned with woods and coulds, but take a look at what is. You made a choice. It was a choice she died for and a choice, a choice that now haunts you as you in turn haunt its scene. You're so concerned with what we think of what happened that we could see your point of view, that we could justify repeating the behaviors that you chose. But what do you think? What do you think about what happened? What do you think of the choice you made? Look around. And she sort of gestures at the church and the swamp surrounding. This is what you murdered your daughter for. And he looks, he sort of looks to his ground and then up again to the heavens. Wisdom come from the very visage of her. I, I see you now. No, you're right. It wasn't. I, I was wrong. I made the wrong choice. I, I... I'm so sorry, Marina. I'm so sorry. I made the wrong choice. And he sort of like collapses it on himself before the altar. Looks like your eternal punishment just got a little shorter. As for me, my God doesn't demand self-reprobation or introspection. He only demands that when something stands in front of me that needs to be speared, that my body's ready to do it. So I'm going to go exercise. She storms off. Mm -hmm. And yeah, goes outside and just starts doing like some just whatever warm ups she does. I don't know. What's like a barbarian spear wielding warm up? She just like does wind sprints. Mm -hmm. She's just doing wind sprints around the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dimitri will time you. <laughs> <laughs> time you. He's holding a sundial. Yeah. <laughs> Irina. Uh, oh, yes. Good morning. Master Droga. Would you mind helping me with the borage? Indeed. And she kind of gives a, a inscrutable glance back at the ghost of Laszlo Ulrich and yeah, then turns and heads to you, Drogar. Uh, now, uh, hold the pot like this and uh, you're going to take the spoon and you're going to whip it or so. Like this? Yes. Now keep it up. Don't stop. Okay. <laughs> when he gives like a little bit of flame. Oh. A little bit of breath, breath open. No, 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 don't be deterred. Keep stirring, otherwise it'll it'll liquefy. We don't, we don't want, want that. that. No, 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 no. How does the little one sleep? Like an angel. She really pulled off something miraculous, didn't she? Quite spectacular. Well, now fold it down. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Over on yes, yes, yes. <laughs> continue, continue, yes. Uh-huh. Like this? Yes. And there. Now take it off. Oh, oh here we are. Right. Like water lapping against, lapping against the shore. And that is a 14 on the performance check for the, for the oatmail. For the oatmail. 14? Well, that's above average. It's pretty good oatmail. Drogar, I don't want to impose, but may I ask how you are feeling? How I am feeling? Well, I know you care for many. Well, in a way that's your own. I know that you have... It's easy to read on your face. I know you feel a sense of responsibility and also a need to protect... I share many of those qualities hmm. for my little sister, and well, she's just growing up. It's a lot to take in. Yes, yes, I suppose you're right. I think I've just gained a new appreciation for the ties of family after all this, hmm. and so I think there's very there's much merit in found family. In perhaps I've taught her all I can teach her. I don't think that she needs to be guarded anymore, which is hard to accept, being she is still a child. Oh, Master Drogar, she has grown up much, yes. And no, I, I don't think she needs any of us to protect her anymore. But that does not mean that she won't need us in moments. There will always come a time. I still find myself wishing my father were here, that I might gain his insight or advice. Well, had we only arrived sooner, perhaps we could have prevented that. If only injusts were candies and nuts, then every day would be the festival of the blazing sun. Hmm. Well, all right, then. Let's uh, 
Don't let this porridge. I'm sure the others are starting to get hungry. Yes, indeed. This is brutal. So far. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, oh, man. It's where we are. Like, no, we're just. Yeah, that's it. Also, like, we're. I think we're about to go into something with, like, the least amount of knowledge we've had thus far. Like, when we were going into the werewolf den, we spoke to people who knew how to fight werewolves. But no one knows anything about Baba La Saga. And, like, oh my God. If I, if I know anything about fantasy, and I would think, given that I. I'm a one-fifth owner of a Dungeons and Dragons business that I should. Um, <laughs> no, really? <laughs> We're about to deal with a fucking swamp hag. Uh-oh. On that point, yeah, uh, Laszlo um, kind of composing himself, pulling himself back up to his... Uh, 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 everyone give me an insight check, in fact, as we, as we kind of congregate here. All right, on. Uh, that's a nine on the die for a 16. Uh, from the pew, one of Winnie's eyes opens uh, as I roll a 27. No! <laughs> no! She's been listening the whole time. 11 on the die for a... 12. Great. Okay, Winnie. <laughs> so yeah, you like you're one eye peeking out, searching around the room, maybe picking up on this like little conversation that Drogon and Irina are having, and it's just like listening in on everything that's happening. One-eyed Winnie as her pirate identity is now. <laughs> as they as they kind of break off to uh, uh, Drogon and Irina kind of break off from Laszlo to do the the porridge, and everyone is going about their business. Kaz also makes her way out to do her exercises. Um, you look at uh, Laszlo, and I mean, it's tricky because he's a ghost. And so, you know, it's hard to read body language from someone who's incorporeal. <laughs> but um, as he kind of like writes himself and composes himself, his uh, he, maybe maybe with a 27, like maybe his shoulders are just like a little straighter. You get the sense that maybe just finally admitting it was his fault gives him like buoys him a little bit. Everyone else is dead. The only person he had left to convince was him. Taking yeah. accountability for that has, like, steadied him in a way that you have not seen him before, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so he kind of picks himself up and straightens himself a bit, and he goes, right. <clears throat> well, I made you all the promise. I told you I would point you the way to the witch's lair, and perhaps fitting as my last act as Burgomaster to guide you to her straight. When you are ready, I will take you to the witch you seek. Oh, boy. <laughs> Trigar will walk up to Laszlo and will say, uh, come with me. But of course, uh, what is it you need, Master Trogar? And he'll take him to the Statue of the Morning Lord. Mm -hmm. And he'll say, kneel. Um, he does so. His ghostly knees sinking a little bit into the the dais. Drogar will pull out Valandril and will lay it on like where his shoulders should be and will cast ceremony, specifically atonement. Oh, nice. In the name of thy god, dost thou wish to be absolved? Oh god. You can see the emotion like swell up and like slam right behind his eyes. Please! <laughs> And by the power granted by Tyr, the god of justice, as justice has been served, I grant thee the absolvement of thy mortal sin. All right, Drunkhart, you have to make a wisdom check. Yes. Oh my gosh. That is quite high. Oh god. <gasps> Sorry, right, I'm going to give it a try. In order for this to be successful. Oh boy. Go for it. Let's see what happens. I love when we just like do a bunch of crazy role play shit, and then it's like, oh, there's a rule for this. Yeah, there. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. I don't even know which one to roll. Uh, so that yeah, this is going to be so yeah. You are making an insight check. Okay. It's a death save die. It's eighteen. Probably not high enough. The only thing that's now stopping his, you know, sort of atonement and maybe finding rest is himself now. You know. But you see in him maybe like just this little bit of return to some formal ritual is is powerful for him. And the fact that someone is extending this to him means a lot. You know, he at this point, he does not consider himself very worthy of, of atonement or saving. So just the very fact that it's being offered means a lot. And even if it's not quite ready to sort of overcome the dissonance that he's built up around himself for so long. He's only starting to kind of unravel that. But you do see a certain amount of uh, 
a recognition splash across his face. A still journey ahead of me, but you set me on the right path. Thank you. The best thing that you can do now in her memory is to serve those who wish to destroy the devil. For he is the root of all this evil. Yes. I think I see the road ahead. Thank you. You are too gracious. It is what I was brought here to do. Well, let me know when you are ready to depart, and I will guide you and keep that promise I made. Very good. And Jorgar will turn and uh, head back toward the group eating their porch. With a mouthful of porridge, guys goes, I'm ready. <laughs> Don't oh, rush. Yeah, Don't rush. <laughs> Finish your porridge. The last thing I need is you having indigestion while you're trying to kill a hag. <laughs> <laughs> this great woman will not be brought low by oatmeal. <laughs> a tummy ache will not be your bane. <laughs> when he walks over to where everybody is eating oatmeal now, and she has taken your purple cloak and has it over her head and is holding it under her chin so just her little face is sticking out looks around sees what everybody's doing <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine we have like a little there's a a, a, a small fire yeah 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 uh, uh, yeah a morning mm -hmm. fire yeah. if you will yeah and I also yeah I think, <laughs> yeah Dimitri also kind of comes over at this moment too and, and puts a, a, a hand on your shoulder Drogar as he sits down to pick oh, up his bowl oh. and he says uh, you've got to stop doing that Never. Um, but yeah, he he just kind of comes over and claps a shoulder on your, your uh, or claps a hand on your shoulder, Drogar, and sits down joining all of you. And yeah, we're here we are uh, enjoying our porridge in the morn. I fear that what we are about to face will make yesterday look like a walk in the park. And I want you all to steal yourselves for that. I have not been very blunt with the group of you since we've been together, but... We walk headlong into mortal danger once again. And as I believe in each and every one of you, and I believe that everyone is able, capable of holding themselves up, it still must be said out in the open that mortal danger is in front of us, and we must be ready to confront it. I'm ready, says Irina. I'm ready to take another ally away from him. Yes. I'm ready to bring us closer. And Dimitri pipes up. We are pretty mortally dangerous, I think, at this point. And so I would be worried for the allies of Strahd, just as much, if not more, than I do for us. Oi, I'm ready to shoot something. <laughs> <laughs> Everything dies. And sometimes it's because of me. Most times it's because of well, you. I was going to say, yeah, most yes. times. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, young champion? <laughs> just everybody keep an eye out for Desi because in the story that my mom used to tell me the witch ate a horse she shall be our first priority little sister should Very we just good. leave her here how long is the journey to Babala Saga who are you asking Laszlo uh, uh, hey Laszlo you want to atone for your sins you can start by telling me how long the trip is to Babala Saga <laughs> <laughs> don't toy with the man's <laughs> penance no. no it's all good uh, are you uh, from here he died a hundred years ago. It doesn't mean he's stupid. I am an instrument of Grumsh. <laughs> and if Grumsh's will is to dole out punishment for mortal sins, then I will do so. Oh, God. Kaz going Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> I am the... That, one, one of the most hardcore lines in history is, I am the punishment of your God. If you had not sinned, God would not have sent a punishment like me. Oh. Fuck. Yeah. Who said that? Genghis Khan. That is wow. To the denizens vicious. to the denizens of Quarism. That's vicious. As he burnt their city to the ground. That's vicious. pretty fucked up, but it's a pretty sick line. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Dang. It's a pretty <laughs> badass mic drop. I yeah. kinda want to use that line at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh great. Really all I'm trying to uh, okay, mechanically. All I'm trying to do is figure out yeah, let me shake off the cast voice. All I'm trying to do is figure out mechanically. How far away are we about to truck, uh, truck yeah, to the no, mud? No, he, he returns in kind. And should we leave Desi in this like place of relative safety instead of bringing her with us? You could reach it by foot from here. 
And in fact, you start to think, Kaz, based on how much more unmanageable the ground has grown, grown the further into the swamp you traverse, like the her hooves and the cartwheels are just going to start to sink, you think, if you go much further from here. Save a spell slot. Very well. Are we ready for this, then? Leave Dizzy here, along with the wagon. God, we already owe them one wagon. We can't lose another one. <laughs> I admit, I... Baba Olasaga has been an enemy of my, my family for centuries now. I grow wary, knowing I will be the first in my line to face her after all these years. I have not measured up well against the challenges we have faced thus far. I worry. Well, that is not true in the slightest. Was it not you that gave Lady Walker a taste of her own medicine? I fail to achieve much. When we met Stroud on the mountain, I felt to which I got myself locked in a cage through this whole fight. Oh, stop. Stop it. Yes, you were helpless against the devil himself when all of us could not hold our own in that moment. And as for the cage, well, we were hardly prepared for the attack. If we are going to fight these things, I need you to buck up. You may not be that Armstrong. Kaz says as ow, she ow, pinches his biceps. Ow. But your brain's strong. Ow. As she pokes him hard in the head. Ow, ow, yeah, ow. <laughs> <sighs> you are right. You are right. Forgive me. It does not do to uh, dwell upon one's gifts mis- misgivings amongst good friends. I apologize. I yeah, flex here. those brain muscles. Well, not since we left my tower, all my books are back there. But regardless, you are right. I am here for you and with you. Yes. Besides, with the help of Irina, I'm sure the two of you can accomplish just about anything. Well, she's very good. (laughs) And Drogar will (laughs) begin to walk (laughs) and just leave him with that. (laughs) Fight not for thy brother, (laughs) fight for your lover, am I right? (laughs) (laughs) All right, Um, great. Kind of pokes him a few more times. (laughs) All right, great. So, well, yeah, what do we think? Do we want to do we want to set off? Yes, I think so. I think uh yeah, into the woods to grandmother's house we go. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Let's take 10. Hi. And then we'll set off. Oh. For Babala Saga at last. Wow. Oh, oh god. Jimmy Christmas. I take it all back. I take it back. <laughs> Broadcast features Campbell O'Hare as Winnie, K. Divine Jones as Kaz, Ned Iannacone as Drogar, Tyler Cantor as Olaf, and me, Trevor William Fail, as your DM. I don't always do shout-outs, but when I do, I prefer our patrons. Special shout-out to some of our newest patrons, Kaylee Rose, Katie, and Mirka Roth. Welcome to the party. If you're not ready to support us financially, there are still plenty of ways to help us out. You can follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at Critical Fail DM, Binge Madness and Mercy on our YouTube channel, and join us there every other Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time when we do live listens of new episodes of the Strodcast. Or rate and leave us a review wherever you like to listen. Thanks, Dungeoneers, and take your day with advantage. What episode was it when we said we were going to go to Baba Lazaga, but we rerouted to the werewolves instead? Episode oh. four. <laughs> <laughs> episode one. Yeah. Uh, the recap. It was pre-podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>